How you guys doing? Yeah. <laughs> Were you guys pumped? I'm pumped. <laughs> that music was awesome. So I'm here to talk to you guys about loving what you do. How do we get there? How do we do that, right? First slide that I got there is do what you love, love what you do. I don't know if this is going to work. Does it reach? Nope. There we go. So why are we here? Why are we here? That is a big question. I'm not kidding. Look, look at the question mark. It's huge. <laughs> that is a big question. It is. And, you know, a lot of us have asked this question at some point in our life. And a lot of us, we've given a lot of thought to it. And for others, it's nothing more than just a passing thought. Now, why are we asking this question? Because for most of us, growing up, this, was, this really wasn't a topic of conversation. You know, I know that out of the things that they told me, the things that they taught me, this didn't really make the list. They didn't really tell me, this is why we're here, son. And since we don't really know the answer to that question, what do we do? We end up just following what other people are doing. I told you a story about a, a shepherd. He woke up every morning to go tend to his sheep. But this particular morning, he went and he saw them doing something really interesting. They were forming a circle around a bush. And they were just following, you know, sheep you just follow the person, in, the one in the front. And they just started walking in a circle, really going nowhere. And the shepherd just thought that that was so funny. But if it wasn't because he pulled one out of the circle, they would have just kept going in a circle. They'd probably still be going in a circle today if it wasn't for the shepherd. And that's kind of how a lot of us kind of live, live our lives. We're just following what one person is doing, what the other person is doing, because we really don't know where we're going. A lot of us are just feeling unmotivated, aimless, no direction, no purpose, no passion. Right? We really don't, don't know who we are. And that's why this question is really important. Because we're trying to make sense of our lives. We're trying to get a sense of meaning and purpose. We're looking for something that motivates us, something that ignites us, something that puts us in a sense of mission, right? That we can make a difference, that we can make an impact, that we matter. That's really what really comes down to that we matter. But how do we go about finding purpose? Purpose, by definition, it's the reason for which something exists. It's the reason for why something is created, right? Why something was created, why something is here, what is it here to do? And that something is you, it's me. Why are you here? Why are you here? And this, this question right here, why are we here? What is my purpose? We spent so much time, energy, and effort trying to figure it out. I know I have. We put a lot of thought into it. But that makes me wonder, what if we all have the same purpose? What if we all have the same purpose? I think that would make the search a lot easier because if we all have the same purpose, then what it boils down to is all we got to find out is how is that going to happen? How am I going to do that? And what I feel our purpose is, because every person that I've asked that is living out their purpose, when I ask them that question, why are you here? Why do you do what you do? The answer is always the same. I want to help others and I want to make a positive impact in their lives. It, has, it may have nuances. They may say, oh, well, I want to help others in this way. But it boils down to the same thing. I want to help others. So what, is, what if that's the reason that we're here? 
to serve others, to help others grow, to help others be better. And whether you know it or not, you're doing it. You're already doing it. You come into someone's life, right there, you're already helping that person by just being who you are. I rented a movie for my daughter a couple of months ago. She just saw it at Redbox, saw the cartoon, thought it was cute. They didn't know what the movie was. So we watched it. And it happened to be, as the introductions were coming along, it was a, a Hindu-created movie. It was produced in India. And it was a robot. It was a movie about robots. This particular robot had like five different arms. But he was, the movie starts with this robot in the middle of a fight. He's fighting all these other robots. Ram, the god robot, had sent a little robot on a mission to kill this robot. Why? Because Ram told them that this robot was broken. And as he's fighting, he told everybody, I'm not broken. I'm just following my dream. But I'm not broken. He had left the programming to follow his dream, to follow his passion. Long story short, this, two little, this little robot and this big robot, they get stuck together. And in his defense, he was trying to survive. He kind of goes underground. And they get buried for years to come. They get uncovered. And they found these two robots, people that were just buying, uh, finding scrap metal to sell it to make more robots. Well, they jolted them, shock of electricity, and they both came back to life. Like, oh my god, they're alive. And so they were trying to separate themselves, but they couldn't. They were stuck together, so they had no choice but to get to know one another. And they started to like each other. They continue about their day, their life, and they get a little bit closer to where Ram could sense that they were down there. And Ram got into the head of the little, pro little robot, his name was Pinky, and reprogrammed him again for his purpose, bring this robot to destruction. He's broken. So the little robots are doing that. They finally get to this center of this, I don't know what it was called, and Ram takes the mind of the big robot and starts to fight himself. This is all you see, you see this robot in conflict with himself. His other arms were beating him and tangling him up. But in this process, what I found that was interesting, I'm sure my daughter was loving the movie, but here I am finding meaning and purpose in a movie, right? <laughs> Yeah, you know, exactly. And this robot is like tangled up, right? And he tells Pinky, Pinky, I think I figured out my purpose. At this point, Pinky was already disprogramming herself to try to help the robot. He says, what is it? My purpose is to help you achieve yours. Man, that hit me so hard. My purpose is to help you achieve yours. And if that's the case, if my purpose is to help you achieve yours, then that search becomes now about how am I going to do that? If we all have the same purpose, and it's for me to help you, how am I going to do that? And that's where the purpose differentiates. Not that we have different purposes. It manifests itself in a different way for everyone. For me, is what I'm doing right now. Life coaching, spiritual coaching, speaking. For others, it may be through music through dance, through teaching, through being a doctor. Well, we're all doing the same thing. We're helping each other. Others come from being a mom, from being a father. It depends. So my question to you is, what is your how? Do you know how you're going to help someone else? How are you going to help me grow, or the person next to you, or the person behind you? How are you going to help their lives be better? If you don't know, it's quite OK, because a lot of people don't know. But I want to show you a way to begin. Here's a little diagram right here. And I'd say it starts by finding your passion, right? Your passion is something you love combined with something you're great at, right? Your passion. It's what starts this whole entire cycle right here. But first, you have to find something you love. Okay? I'm going to share with you how, that, how I came to that something I love. 
Back when I was in college, I went to Texas A&M. And I think I shared a little bit of this the first time I talked, how I was there for the bonfire accident. We experienced uh, 12, of, uh, 12 of the Aggies passed away in that accident. But for me, it was more than just those 12. For me, it was one of them was my buddy from my, our, my core cadets unit. The very next day, it was my grandfather passed away. A week later, my first love and I broke up. So I experienced 14 losses in a matter of two weeks. I was only 19. I had never experienced love. And to me, that was, I mean, loss. To me, that was my first turning point. So I quit school. It just became too hard for me. Even being there was just a different feeling. A&M was never the same after that, at least for me. So I came home, and I really wasn't doing much with myself. In the summers while I was at a and I would work as a lifeguard at Fiesta, Texas. So I did that. I said, that's something I know how to do. That's what I did. And at that time, don't laugh at me. NSYNC and Britney Spears were pretty popular <laughs> at the time. And I would watch their videos, and I would find myself learning their choreographies. And I would just do it right there and then, right? And I remember that when I was little, I would always dance. If there was a school talent show, I would always get a group of people and we would do it. If there was some kind of folkloric dance in Puerto Rico, of our typical folkloric dances, I would do it. Some kind of event, show for school, I was dancing. But I was never put in dance because that's not what you do with boys. You play sports, you know? And I remember that that was a really good feeling for me. I really enjoyed it. You know, I, I felt like I was alive when I did that. And while working at Fish, Texas, they posted a sign, employee talent show. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm so doing that. I'm so doing that. So I got, a f I got a few guys together from the water park. I said, guys, I will teach you the choreography. I will teach you how to do it. Would you do this with me? I like, yeah. And guess what we did? And sync. <laughs> of course, we didn't sync. But we called ourselves Can't Sync. Because we were lifeguards, you know, it makes sense. <laughs> That's, that was our name. Well, we didn't win, we didn't win. But we did receive the award for best show, which was good, right? A couple of weeks after, a manager from the entertainment department came to the water park and said, we want to offer you an audition. I was like, really? It's like, yeah, you're, you're pretty good. So there you are, something I love, dance. And I was good at it. So of course I took the audition, and I did well, and they offered me a job. And if anybody has been to Fish, Texas, my first uh, job was the Monster Mash Bash show during Halloween. It's like that rock concert. So I loved it, I was good at it, now I was getting paid for it. And then not only that, I went on to do more shows with them. I did Rockin' at Rockville High, I did a, um, a country western show, from there, I started studio training. I became more, I wanted to be more proficient in this skill and this craft. I joined a couple of dance companies in town, ballet dance companies, and I even began teaching. So dance was becoming my profession. But it started with something I love. Dance gave me a lot of great things. I got a lot of great things out of dance. One of which, I met my wife through dance. And that's what I'm gonna take you now. That was my next turning point when I was experienced loss again. I was losing my wife. We were about to split up. I said, the first loss that I experienced wasn't enough. Here I am again. And I thought losing my grandfather was the worst, the worst experience I've ever had. This was probably the worst I've had. Why? Because I didn't realize how much of my sense of self came from her. I was so attached to her. I needed her to tell me who I was. So here I am, about to experience loss again, experiencing pain, going to struggle. It flipped my world upside down. Everything I knew was ending in my mind. But what I re the last time at A&M, I realized, this is in retrospect, that when you experience loss, you experience a loss of your, of your own, a loss of your sense of self. Back then, it was just that my beliefs or the way I view the world had changed. This time around, I was losing myself. I didn't know who I was. 
And so I began my journey towards finding out who that was, who I am. It began by going through meditation, reading, and as I got to know myself a little bit better, it things that started to get more clear for me. I started to gain clarity. And that's when I started to clarify my purpose. Okay? I started to ask questions. What is the why behind everything I do? What is the why? I'm talking about a big why. Not, oh, because I want to get paid, or oh, because I want to, no. Something beyond me, something much greater than me. I had nothing to do with me. It had to do with others. Because when you find your why, your how just happens. When your why gets clear, your, the way that you're going to do that becomes clear. So what was my why? Same why for everybody else that I asked. I wanted to help others, and I wanted to make a positive impact in their lives. As I assess my life, my purpose, my passion, right? Because dance was my passion. I looked at my videos. I went back and looked at all my videos. And I looked at myself from an objective point of view. And I realized that person was not passionate about dance. That person did not inspire me to dance. If I looked at myself objectively, that person didn't have that fire about dance. He was good at it, but he wasn't passionate about it. What I do was passionate about was teaching. When I would walk into the, the room, into the ballroom, into the studio, teaching someone how to dance, that lit me up. Just, their aha, just having their, their aha moments, breaking something down for them so they can make it easier, so they can go home and be like, oh my God, I'm a better dancer now after taking that class. That's what did it for me. So if teaching is what I really liked, then I can teach anything. And if I could clarify my purpose, if I can find who I was, right? if I can identify what my gift was, if I can find myself, if I can find meaning and purpose in my life, then I can teach that for other people as well. So now, going back to this, it started with dance. It became my profession, but now I'm kind of clarifying it now. It's getting more specific. It's what Napoleon Hill calls definiteness of purpose. That's the point where you start achieving, where achievement starts, okay? But now I had to ask the question, how, how is this gonna help others? How is teaching dance gonna help others? It does, it does help. But I wanted to go further, right? So now it's becoming my vocation because if I can teach anything and I can teach myself how to find myself and how to find peace and balance and get on that journey, then I can teach others to do it. So now it's becoming my vocation. Now I'm on a mission. And I truly felt that way. I remember uh, a friend of mine from London started following me on Facebook and he, he was going through the same thing. I was six months ahead of him, so to speak, but he was also losing his wife. And I remember putting anything aside. I was doing graphic design and nothing mattered but him. I would go to a dance congress where I'm supposed to be dancing, my passion. And if somebody knew what I, what I did, they would stop me, I would sit there for hours. I wouldn't even dance. That's when I started to just, you know what, there's something here. I'm getting more fulfillment from this than I was getting from dancing. Now, what happens once you identify your gifts? If you were here last week, Jason said, when you identify your gifts, you have a responsibility to live them out loud, right? You have a responsibility to live them out. So once you identify them, what do you do? Well, it becomes about action. Taking action. Passion plus daily action equals a purposeful life. Okay? Passion plus a daily action equals purposeful life. Okay? You have to take daily actionable steps in that direction. Where are you going? What is your why? Keep that right there. I'm going there. But it also is going to require that you have discernment. That you say, every time you come to a decision, to a choice, that you ask yourself, is this right here going to get me there? Is it going to help me to get there? Is this decision or this choice giving me the time and the freedom 
to do what it takes for me to get there. Is this decision or this choice going to give me the money and the resources that I need for me to get there? If the answer is no, then don't do it. Because you'll be going against yourself. You'll be going against the reason why you were created. The reason why you're here. Like I said, Jason said, when you find your gifts, when you, when you get ignited from within, you have a responsibility to live it out loud. Don't go against yourself. Be clear. Okay? And the same questions I ask of people too. If this person that's coming into my life gonna help me get closer to my purpose or is it gonna bring me back or stop me in any way? If that's the case, I don't do it. They don't come into my life. You're either helping me get closer to my purpose or you're not. I like to do an exercise with you guys because even if you don't know, if, even after talking about this, you still, man, I don't know. My friend from London, that's, that was the case for him. He had no clue. I was like, Carl, what do you love? I don't know. Carl, what is your passion? Honestly, I don't know. And then the last thing I told him was like, you know what, Carl, then just follow your curiosity. What are you curious about? What are you interested in? Because your curiosity is going to kickstart that cycle because it's going to help you discover something that you love. And boom, there it is. Something you love, it becomes your passion, it becomes your profession, it becomes your mission. Okay? Let me give you some cards real quick. If you can just pass them around. This is going to be a fairly quick exercise. It's just three questions. And you don't have to write the questions down. Just simply put the answer down. When you're ready, give me the thumbs up. All right. Okay, three questions. The first question, you don't have to write the question down, just think about the answer. Think over the past two weeks. If you can do it over the past week, even better, but over the past two weeks, something, an experience that you had that had a lot of meaning for you. It was such a meaningful experience. It was such a meaningful moment. Something that had a lot of meaning for you. Now, the answer to the second question can only come from the answer to the first question. Okay? The answer to the second question can only come from the answer of your first question. What is the meaning of life based on what you answered in that first question? Create a statement. And you can start it off. The meaning of life is... Okay, we're good with that one? The answer to the third question comes from the answer to your second question. It's just a little bit of a, just a little change. And it may be that you, re, you rewrite it. You may rephrase it if you want to. What is the meaning of your life? Good? All right, who wants to share? Come on. We're all here together. This is, this is part of what, this is important to you, right? You want to make this happen. Who wants to share? Which one do you want to share? The meaning of your life. Oh, if, if you want to share the whole process, you can. Yeah. The meaning of life is allowing the release of what doesn't serve you to allow the receipt of what enables a path to your purpose. And the meaning of my life is a creation of self-healing to enable others to heal themselves too, to maximize their potential purpose. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, you can give her a hand. That was good. <laughs> Who else? Daniel. <laughs> Thank you, Gabriela. That's beautiful. Um, well, for the first question, what happened in the last few weeks that was meaningful for me it was the, the decision to pursue, pursue music full time, to go back to nice. my first love. So that was meaningful. To go back to what? My first love, which was music. 
I've been working in sales for years and kind of, kind of played trumpet, even touched it five years. So. Wow. so making that decision to go back was very meaningful. So based off of that answer, the meaning of life is to create music that will impact the masses in a positive way. So it has to benefit others. And for the third one, I am music, creativity, and a life changer. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Wow. Did you say a game changer? Huh? Did you say and a game changer? Life changer. Life changer. Wow. But you see the elements there? Purpose, others, impact, right? Starts with something you love. Anybody else? One more person, come on. Jamie. And so the meaning of life to me is uh, making things special for others. So the meaning of my life is making things beautiful and special for the world to feel loved. Aww. Well, I feel it. Every time I'm with you, I feel it. Anybody else? No? So you see what, you, do you hear those aspects? Do you hear those, those things right there? Love, being something they're good at or they're great at, right? Some of them get paid for this. And then the last one is helping others. If you want to take a picture of that, take a picture of that. I can also email it to you. You can also Google it. Just put in the purpose circles. Purpose circles. Purpose circles? Yep, the purpose circles. I like that. Hey, you're onto something, buddy. The, hey, a play. The purpose circles. <laughs> okay? Any questions? Any thoughts before we end? That, was the exercise helpful to you? Yeah? Did it give you at least a starting point? Yeah? yeah? Good. So my friends, I really want to invite you and encourage you to give yourself the choice, the freedom to do what you love, to follow your passion. Because your passion will lead you right into that how, will help you find that why, and you may not end up doing what you love. I'm not doing dance anymore, which is what I started in my beginning, is love. But it, it, it ensured that I love what I do. Because that's what I'm doing, what I'm gonna do well in. That's what I'm gonna excel in. That's how I'm gonna impact people's lives. It will also ensure my happiness, okay? But it starts with something you love. Thank you very much. <laughs>